Hello everybody, um, I just got back about an hour ago or so from seeing Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. My initial reaction is I really enjoyed it. I loved the callbacks to the original Ghostbusters. Um, I will name some of them, but first I want to just give my initial thoughts. And I didn't think it was as good as Afterlife. There were like a few things here and there that weren't deal breakers for liking the movie, but I was like, you know, they, you know, it was kind of like, really? Um, but, you know, made it a little, took you a, a little bit out of the element of the film, but I did enjoy it nonetheless way better than um, the all-female cast one. And, and as I brought up before, I'm progressive, I'm a liberal, I'm very PC, so that it has nothing to do with the fact that the all-female one had all women. It was just a really bad film, and I I got it for free. It uh, I bought a movie or something, and it came with. I, I might have it might have come with Afterlife. I bought that on Blu-ray, and it came with it came the all the Ghostbusters movies basically that had come out before it. So Ghostbusters one, two, and the third one with the all-female cast, and I tried watching it. I, did, I couldn't finish it. It was that bad. It, but, um, no, but the, the new one, uh, Frozen Empire, was really entertaining. Um, I will stand by what I said in my initial lead up to this, uh, the video I did this morning, and say that m most people who are not enjoying it. Maybe they didn't see Afterlife, and they, they're comparing this solely to the first two Ghostbusters movies. And, you know, it's not like Afterlife and Frozen Empire aren't like all-out comedies. They're, they've got more character development, they've got um, more story going on with the characters. Um, they're not as all out, uh, all out comedy. I, I think I've reiterated that already. Um, they were more action oriented and suspense and um, sci-fi as well. Just checking to see if it's raining. Um, I, I don't think it will rain, but <clears throat> we will see. So I think and another thing I'm noticing, I mean, I asked my nephew, because I, I, he saw it, and he's like, it's okay. And I'm like, have you seen the last one, Afterlife? And he's like, no. And I'm like, really? You didn't see the last? Okay, so if you didn't see Afterlife, all the new characters, whether it's McKenna Grace, um, Finn Wolford, uh, their mother... Uh, I forget who plays her, um, or their, I guess, stepdad, who was the, the, the teacher in the last one. Those whole storylines, oh, and podcast. All those characters are like, well, who are these people? What, 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 what's the significance of these characters? You think, you don't know. So, it's like, I guess it's like going into a second movie of a sequel, and you have no idea what's going on. Like, why would you do that? Why would you not see Afterlife? I am going to urge anyone who hasn't seen um, Frozen Empire, rent or somehow see Afterlife, Ghostbusters Afterlife, before you see this, because you are going to be highly confused at some of the storylines in the movie. Okay, now that I've got all that out of the way, and I said I enjoyed it. It was fun. A lot of different homages to the original. Here are the homages to the original that I just wanted to bring up. Some things that um, stuck out to me. One was the music. Um, if you uh, watched the first two Ghostbusters movies back in the 80s, it had this kind of piano um, riff kind of score. Um, it also had kind of a sound that sound like a theremin or something in some of the, the, the score and 
<clears throat> the the piano riff had two two kind of chords. One was more of a um, an inquisitive kind of sound, and the other was more of the you know jovial kind of um, happy sound um, that you would get in a really happy scene or a funny scene, and um, you got that in the score, which you got in the last one as well. So it, it did have callbacks to the um, original score. And another thing it had was obviously you had this Stay Puff Marshmallow men that were miniature. They kind of reminded me of Gremlins. I really liked that part of the movie, all the parts they were in. And I, what else? Oh, the library from the original. I think it was supposed to be the New York State Library, the main one. But um, I don't know if it was really filmed there. I, I, I have a feeling it was filmed in their, in the Georgia um, filming locations in, in, uh, in studio. So um, I don't think that was actually the inside of it. The outside of it was really the New York State Library, um, the official he headquarters of it, um, But I, the main one. But I don't think the inside was. But it was the, the inside looked just like from the original Ghostbusters. Um, the firehouse was very close to the original um, almost to a T uh, little differences here and there and they ended up living in the upstairs part which I thought was pretty cool I thought that was really neat and the, oh uh, Dan Aykroyd's character or whatever Ghostbuster he was in the second one he had in a shop where he like collected antiquities and stuff they brought back that shop back that was pretty cool and, oh, obviously, uh, Slimer was in it. I mean, that was really, he had really funny scenes in it. And, obviously, they, they also brought back all the uh, original Ghostbusters that are still alive, including, um, uh, what's her name? The actress, the funny one. Um, the short little funny actress that was in the, in the first two. She's in it as well, and she actually does some Ghostbusting in this, which is pretty cool. So there were, a, there were a lot of callbacks to the original. Um, one more obscure one that some people might not notice is in the uh, lab where they had little stations set up where people were working behind glass and being observed and stuff. And they had ghosts and stuff set up. That was kind of like in the second one when Egon Spengler um, had um, uh, like little things set up where he was observing people's reactions to things so that was kind of similar to that so I liked all the all the callbacks I like all the, di the the different things like that um and how they mixed it with with the newer characters and the newer stuff was really cool I mean you it was mostly about the newer cast with um the other Ghostbusters kind of mixed in for good measure so I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, again, not as much as Afterlife, but still very entertaining. And, and I, again, you're not going to understand the movie and not going to understand the pacing and the, the feeling of the movie and the, the, the tone of the movie if you don't see Afterlife. I really suggest anyone seeing this to see Afterlife first. And don't compare this to... Try not to compare this to the first two Ghostbusters movies, compare it to Afterlife, and then you're gonna really enjoy it. I'm gonna go out there and say, the first two movies haven't aged as well as they could have. They're still entertaining to, to a point, but they're, they're, they're kind of dated. I enjoyed Afterlife better than the first two. The second one, I don't, the second, not the second Ghostbusters, but Ghostbusters Frozen Empire I like it not as much as probably the first Ghostbusters but I rate it higher than Ghostbusters 2 which I don't think I think could have been better actually it wasn't as good um, I think again I think the driving force of the film the first two films was Sigourney Weaver I mean, the scene where she was giving her kid a bath and took off her shirt was like, you know, the directors just had to throw that in there just for the, the guys watching, you know. But, um, 
yeah, really enjoyable film. I would highly recommend it. Um, if you haven't seen it, I would see it in the theater. It's enjoyable. And stay for the mid credit scene. There's no post credit scene, but there's a mid credit scene. It's really funny. It's going to have you laughing. If it doesn't, I don't know. I thought it was funny. My dad thought it was funny. I'm not going to give the end credit scene away, but this is a spoiler review, so there are spoilers throughout. Um, try not to get too many spoilers. Um, like the story beats and stuff. Oh, so another thing that um, so I've heard people say that you know, there were too many storylines and it was getting confusing, but really there weren't. You had the McKenna Grace character, the girl in it, uh, with her storyline that was directly tied into the main villain, so I don't think that was really a side story. And then you had the Anacroid um, Ghostbuster and he was going kind of on a thing with... Uh, who was he with? Um... He was doing a, like a little investigation on it on the side as well, but they were all kind of connected, even if they were slightly interconnected. So it didn't bother me that they did it that way. That they had, and also like any film that I see, I think every film has this. This it, there is a slow point in the middle where it slows down, but it surely picks up for the end battle scene against the end ghost. And another thing I liked. Um, first Ghostbusters and I don't know if the first Ghostbusters and Afterlife I think had Gozar for the main villain I don't think Gozar was in the second one that was some weird guy named Vito something I think but so I like that they got a new original villain and they didn't just go back to Gozar. I thought that was pretty cool. So, yeah, highly recommend this film. Um, go in with the lowest of expectations, not expecting it to be better than Ghostbusters 1 and 2, but it's on a par with Afterlife, which I actually really enjoyed, and I also liked Frozen Empire. Out of a five, I'd give it a four and a half. You know, maybe I'd rate um, Afterlife a 5 out of a 5 because I really enjoyed it. But both really good films. Um, oh, uh, one more thing I forgot to bring up. The thing I found a little unrealistic. So, McKenna Grace's friend podcast was in it. Okay, okay. you know, they came up with a good excuse he was doing an internship with uh, Dan Aykroyd's character, uh, his Ghostbuster character, and um, doing like podcasting and stuff with him um, with, for a show. And he lied to his parents and said he was at space camp. So, okay. But then Finn Wolford's friend, who he was interested in, he liked her. He thought she was pretty and whatnot. Had a crush on her. Um, I think they started dating or whatever. She shows up like halfway through the film and I'm like what? So she's in New York too? Finn Wolfer's character is supposed to be like 18 so I should push she was supposed to be 18 but and I think she's the same girl from um Monarch Legacy of Monsters if I'm not mistaken I think it's the same girl so she's a good actress, I mean, but I'm like, did they have to shoehorn her in? She was working with the Ghostbusters, too, uh, at their facility, at their scientific facility. But other than those two little things, it didn't ruin the film for me at all. I really enjoyed it, and I highly recommend it. Okay, everybody, have a great, great Tuesday.